If you use the Windows touchscreen keyboard, you've probably been like me. It's okay. It's a good improvement over Windows 10, but it's not a good primary input method for touch. Again, swiping is better. It's a good improvement. Until I learned these touch keyboard tips, it was really hard for me to do a handful of different things. So we're going to go over those right now. And I'm going to show you how to customize your own touch keyboard at the end of this video. So stick around for the whole thing. So I'm using lively wallpapers, which gives us this cool background. I've got the presentation mode of Tablet Pro. So you can see this red trail and that's just making it easier for you to follow with this tutorial. Okay, so let's open up the touch keyboard. You can see I've got a custom color scheme on here and I can adjust this to the larger one. Now this is not the default larger one. So that one, you can see right here, keyboard layout, small, and then traditional is the one you want. Default is this right here. It has a handful of uh, missing keys and I like the traditional one. So understanding how that works is really important. You have a Cortana button right here, a Cortana button right here, so you can do uh, some voice typing, but you need to be in a field. All right, let's jump to the first tip. So we're gonna open up Notepad. Notepad. And here inside of Notepad, we're going to do uh, some typing with the touch keyboard. Now I'm going to show you a couple tips using Cortana, and um, those are free. <laughs> so we're going to use swiping. How are you? Okay, great. Now let's do an exclamation point. So we're going to tap right here. So now if you're using a, a stylus, or you're trying to select a word. If you're using touch, you can double tap on the word, but you wanna double tap where the cursor is. If you tap someplace different, it's going to move the cursor. Same thing with the stylus. Here, if you double tap where the cursor is, that will select the one word. If you triple tap, that will select the entire sentence. This is really important because this makes it a lot easier to work with the text that you're trying to change. Okay, so let's say that we've written out, hello, how are you? And we want to delete it. We cannot scratch through. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through these four tips. Number one, swiping up on this top row will give you a number instead of a letter. Okay, number one, space. And we're going to say, inserting a number instead of a letter without switching to the different number pad. And we're going to press enter and number two. How to change the case of the word using the touch keyboard. Number three. How to open the touch keyboard consistently. This is a big problem. Number four. Other input methods besides the standard touch keyboard. Now there's actually uh, about five different touch keyboards inside of Windows 11, and most people are unaware of what those are. So we're gonna talk about those, and then I'm gonna give you a tip on using uh, speech to text because there's certain things that just take a really long time, like unknown words. And so we're gonna talk about how to do that in point number five. How to input unknown words quickly. 
All right, so this is what we're going to be going over. Let's start with number one, inserting a number instead of a letter without switching to a different number pad. All right, so what that looks like here, right here on the bottom left corner is the AND123 or the ABC button. Now, if you're typing and you want to input some numbers, you can switch over here and you can add some numbers this way, uh, or you can swipe up on the QWERTY top row keys here and get the same uh, reaction. Okay, so we're going to delete that and let's move on to point number two. Uh, this is how to change the case of the word using the touch keyboard. So I'm going to combine this because why not? Uh, how to input an unknown word quickly. And so what we're gonna do is we are going to spell my last name. This is a pain. This is a pain in the butt to do with the touch keyboard because my last name has 47 letters in it. If you spell it wrong, if you spell it correctly, it has far less. All right, so we're gonna do this two ways I'm gonna demonstrate. F-R-A-N-G-I-P-A-N-E. Okay, now here, double tap on the cursor. We're going to press up here on the shift button, and that is going to change the case of the word. This is really important because there's a lot of situations where I'm typing and I realize that I uh, need to change just the case of the word. So this is called toggle case. Toggle case can be done in a number of different programs like OneNote, like uh, Outlook or Microsoft Word using the keyboard shortcut uh, Shift plus F3. Okay, and we're going to add one additional option here. So here, six. Using text expansion in conjunction with the typing keyboard. Touch. Okay, and in order to do this, we're going to use a program. That program is called K O S D. Keypress O S D. And Keypress O S D is, again, text expansion. So it's gonna make certain things much faster, uh, like my email here. So like my email here, I can do uh, J-E-M-L, and it expands out into my email. That saves me so much time, and this can do formatting, and it's very quick and easy. So let's go ahead and create one right now. So let's say we want to do this same thing, but with a different one. So I like doing S-E-M-L. So let's say this is our support email. So we go support at tabletpro.com and we click add entry and we're done. So let's go here and let's go S-E-M-L space. Ta-da! Now I use this actually for emojis frequently. So I don't want to switch to the emoji keyboard because it's Windows key plus period and it takes me out. It just takes longer than I want it to. So I do S M L space G R N space L G H space K S S space. Uh, I don't know why that one has a K still, but you get the idea. Really helpful, super fast, and allows you to do uh, emojis really quickly. All right, so we have done this one: how to input unknown words quickly using text expansion with KeyPress OSD. This is a great program, does a lot of things besides that. It also is what is, is showing the keyboard shortcut right here on the screen. Okay, so what we haven't done yet is the other input methods besides the standard one. So let's open the touch keyboard. By the way, there's some settings here inside of more settings that are important. We're going to go here. I highly suggest turning off show the touch keyboard show the touch keyboard when there's no keyboard attached because this 
is a um, pain in the butt when you're trying to use OneNote or another program that thinks you want the touch keyboard out, but doesn't. And if you're relying on it, it is not consistent. I don't like it. And by the way, these are my, my settings right here um, for the typing keyboard. All right, so here, this is the regular one. You can switch here to default, which I don't like. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't have the same. The other one's just better. Small split. You have the artist pad open. It'll be in the way. This is basically so you can put both hands on the side and type like a um, big phone. Okay. Uh, I don't like that one. And then here we have uh, the split one. The traditional one is the one I prefer right here. But uh, really what I do is I like this one. And then when I have the artist pad over here open, I like this option right here, which is the OSK. Uh, this is the on-screen keyboard and it gives you some extra functions. So you can see over here, options, print screen, insert, and page down, all of these ones over here. You can actually turn on additional keys like the number pad over here. NumLock is going to switch this back and forth. And this is giving you some extra options if you want them. And this is scalable. So I can just grab this corner and make it larger, smaller, have it fit according to whatever it is I'm trying to do. Really helpful. I find that the on-screen keyboard, keyboard shortcut, control, win key plus O, that keyboard and the small one give me pretty much everything that I need. Then using the Tablet Pro Artist Pad over here, I have all of these punctuation, enter, space, uh, this is change case. So in certain programs, you can tap here. So if I'm inside of OneNote, and I have a word right here, if I double tap on this word, I can press change case and change case, shift plus F3. And if I'm doing this, this is giving me the option of doing things like, uh, this is backspace, which is delete to the left, put the cursor over here. This is delete to the right. Um, we have space, enter, exclamation point, all of these type of things that might take a little bit longer. So, Typing here with swipe. And I want to add a question mark. I can do that easily using this over here. And down here, there is a shift right or shift end, sorry, and shift home. So you can move the cursor around easily this way. All right, so I promised you that I would show you how to do this custom keyboard. So we're going to click here, theme and resize. And what I've done is this custom theme right here, keyboard size, we have edit. And I have text here. I have this seafoam teal suggested text color, which is right up here. I have this brick red, the keys. I have gray, dark, key transparency I have set to 66. That's that panel on the back. And window, you can actually pick a picture if you want. And you can change the fill. Let's say we want this robot crab. And put here, we're gonna change the background brightness. And that looks pretty good. We're going to save. We're going to press open keyboard right here. So that's how you customize your keyboard. And here I'm going to give you one extra tip. This is the clipboard manager. And so right here, what you can do, anything you copy to the clipboard, this is keyboard shortcut win plus V. This is going to open up the clipboard manager. Now this needs to be turned on inside of windows for this to work. But what you can do is you can keep everything that you have here. You can pin it. 
So if there's a URL, um, if you have a, a link or a phrase or something that you want to save, you can just click pin right here and that's going to pin it. So if you're copying something frequently to the clipboard, use this, it will save you so much time. And again, you can call that up with win plus V. Here we're going to find clipboard settings, system clipboard history. You have to turn that on right here, and that's going to allow you to use the Windows key plus V in order to access that. By the way, I always keep auto punctuation turned off inside of um, all the speech engines that I use because it, it puts a lot of periods and commas and stuff when I don't want them because I pause when I talk in order to think. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for this video. If you found this useful, then like and subscribe. My name is Justice Frangipani, aka Tablet Pro. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.